Hello, Richardson ISD. Today, I am speaking with our Executive Director for Special Education Services, Dr. Cindy Lawrence. There have been a number of specific questions from parents who have asked to hear directly from us to hear how we will support the unique needs of our students served by Special Education and 504. We are doing this interview via Zoom. And I'm going to ask Dr. Lawrence some very important questions. This is the first in a series of Zoom interviews that will afford us the opportunity to dive deeper into specific areas in the blueprint. So, hello, Dr. Lawrence. Please introduce yourself to our Richardson ISD community. Hello, Richardson ISD community. I am so happy to be here. I'm starting my sixth year uh, with Richardson ISD and serving the students in our district with disabilities. So Dr. Lawrence, over 11% of our students in Richardson ISD are supported through special student services. Can you please share with us a little bit about your team's role in serving our special RSD students? Yes, in fact, I'm really excited to get to share some of the details that we have um, in progress to make sure that we are ready for our students for both virtually and face to face. Um, just like general ed teachers, our special ed teachers will be on Zoom, will be calling parents, will be interacting with families to provide the services that are in those 504 plans as well as our IEPs. We are working with our staff to be trained and ready to do that. In the inclusion setting, parents will see their special ed teachers joining Zooms with other teachers. Those students who need some pullout time with a special ed teacher will have a separate Google Classroom and will be interacting with their teachers in that way. So we are really excited to get started and we know that we are going to be able to reach every one of our students. Thank you so much, that is great. And I know we are very reassuring to our parents. So we're Opening school on August 19th, Dr. Lawrence, fully virtual, and some of our families will be choosing a virtual option for the whole school year. How has your team been working to shift how you serve and support students in person to virtual supports? Well, similar to our general ed, we are training our teachers in the use of the Google Classroom platform and Zoom, but we're also diving a little deeper in making sure our teachers know how to use all the accommodations that are available virtually. Um, additionally, we are um, looking at ways that we might have to address changes in students' IEPs to um, make sure we meet all of their needs virtually. So we have several different avenues we're going down to make sure every student who wants to stay virtual and also those times when we have to be virtual that we're ready for it. So along those lines regarding IEPs, will you share with our parents how we will be meeting the needs of um, our, our students' IEPs when it was developed in person, but now we're learning virtually? And can yes. you give us an example? Can you also maybe give us an example of an IEP goal and how it can be met differently in person vir versus virtually? Yes, um, let me give you a couple of different examples. One that's really straightforward is um, students who have speech therapy uh, in person, we have fully trained all of our SLPs to do teletherapy. It's a fully acceptable way to provide therapy for students who have speech therapy and we're ready to go. And in that case, no changes would be needed for an IEP. Let's take a student who has maybe an accommodation of um, verbal prompts from a special ed teacher in a classroom. Well, in the virtual environment, that might be slightly disruptive. So we might have to tweak that IEP so that that special ed teacher might could do a breakout session when the student gets distracted to get them back on track. Um, diving just a little bit deeper, let's say we have a goal for a student with some behavioral challenges. You know, their boundaries in space are 
difficult for them to maintain. And we have a goal that we're going to teach them to keep their hands to themselves. Well, in the virtual environment, maybe that's not the right goal. However, when you have buttons in front of you and ways to get on chat, that student may actually need a new goal that relates specifically to the virtual environment. And in that case, we would want to address that differently in the IEP. So how would a parent go about changing a goal if we think that we need to adjust the IEP? Well, I'm advising both parents and our teachers to start the year looking very closely at those IEPs. And some students, we're gonna be good to go, but some students, will need either an amendment to their IEP or a face-to-face, not face-to-face, -face, we're gonna do our, our meetings virtually, but a meeting where we all have the group around the table and we talk about those changes to the IEP. So some parents will be getting notices to come to an IEP meeting. They also may choose to reach out to us and say, you know, I want one myself and we, welcome parents' requests for IEP meetings. Thank you. So we serve students in multiple settings, including providing services in the general education classroom to highly specialized classrooms, including autism classrooms and behavior classrooms. So how will those students be supported during virtual instruction? Well, our classrooms for uh, our students with more significant disabilities need special attention in this, these times. We're doing very direct training with each of those groups, like our teachers um, in developmental classrooms have a separate training from the teachers in our behavior classrooms. In those different settings, we are working on um, protocols for safety. Um, those teachers are getting additional personal protective equipment that are not necessarily needed in the general ed classroom. Um, uh, gloves and face shields and special plexiglass that can be moved around. Um, so we're doing extra training for those face-to-face. -face. Additionally, we know that Virtual learning may not suit the needs of those students to be synchronous all day. So we may need an IEP meeting where we talk about how can we break the student's day up into sections that are asynchronous and synchronous. And how can we support parents in that IEP? Sometimes the IEP can include some support for parents in those environments. So every IEP needs to be looked at individually and we need to meet the student where they are and accommodate in, while always concentrating on health and safety first. Great. So many of our students also receive speech therapy support. So will these services continue? Yes, they will. In fact, we are excited to roll out teletherapy. We think that not only will it be important in this year, it may be a service model that helps both parents and students going forward. Um, and our speech pathologists have already been trained. They're going to receive some additional training. Now, I do want to add one caveat. We do have students with disabilities where teletherapy not, might not be exactly appropriate those individual cases may require an IEP meeting where we talk about um, if allowed for in the safety protocols of our school would the student come up to see their speech therapist even if they're in virtual. Um, that will be guided by where we are in terms of having our students back on campus as well as the individual needs of the student. We have many students with 504 plans and they may be an MTA or take flight. So we know that this spring MTA take and take flight may have looked a little different. So can you share with our students and families and tell us what they can expect from MTA and take flight starting August 19th? Yes, just like at home learning looks different, MTA and take flight look different in the spring. 
virtual learning will be complete lessons with a teacher just as if they were face to face so their dyslexia teacher will have a time to meet with every student just as if they were on campus they will experience the full lesson cycle we also have bought additional materials so those students who are learning virtually will get their own packet of MTA or take flight materials to use at home. But the lessons will look the same as if they were at school. Great. And I guess the last question, and we've heard this question stated a number of different ways from our parents, but we know that the virtual environment looks so different. So many of our parents are asking how their child's accommodations are going to be met virtually. And I know you've spoken to this in a number of the uh, previous answers, but if you could um, just really bring home to our parents this assurance, um, if they, what if they need different accommodations in the virtual classroom than what they needed face to face? Absolutely, a 504 meeting and an IEP meeting is available to them to make sure that we get the right supports in place. The things that we have available to us through technology in terms of accommodations do look a little different than what we have available to us in the classroom, like text-to-speech is much more available in the virtual. Um, so those kinds of accommodations, we definitely want to get in place for every student who needs them. One of the questions I've answered from a parent um, is about those accommodations around testing. And if a student has certain accommodations in the testing environment at school, then they're going to be applicable to providing those assessments at home. Now, we know that parents may have to supervise that a little more closely to have those accommodations at home, um, but they are absolutely applicable in the home setting. And so, for example, in the, in the school setting, we sometimes have an adult read the questions to a student. That can happen in the virtual setting, either by an adult on Zoom or if a parent is available to do that, to keep the student's attention. So we can be very flexible to make sure we have the right accommodations. Our goal is to make sure every student is making progress, both on their IEPs and in our general curriculum. Well, thank you, Dr. Lawrence, so much for this time. I can tell you that just speaking with you today has increased my confidence that all of our students in, that are served by special student services, that, that they, their needs are going to be met. We're going to meet them where they are when they return to us, and we're going to ensure that every single one of them will connect, learn, grow, and succeed this school year. So on behalf of my office and all of Richardson ISD, I want to thank you and your team for all the work that you've put in this summer and, and the confidence that, that I know that this time with you and moving forward will provide to our parents about meeting the needs of the students that we serve. So thank you, Dr. Lawrence, and I want to just um, have everyone who's listening to this video to, to meet us both in this place of, of, of knowing that we've got this, Richardson ISD. Thank you for your time and stay well. Thank you.